Hello, Robert MacDonald here. Please like, share, and subscribe. You can find me on Twitter, Rumble, uh, Rumble, BitChute, Telegram, Twitter, and YouTube. I'm still working on Rumble. It's being a pain in the butt, and half the time doesn't accept my thumbnails, but it'll get better. Hang in there. So, today I'd like to give a shout out to my friend Noah. He inspired this message. Um, so in the movie, The Matrix, in an early scene, Morpheus presents a blue pill and a red pill to Neo. And there was born a very powerful meme and idea concept of the pill. And since then, we've had every sort of pill imaginable, from the serious like the red and blue pill, or black and white, to ones that, while sending a serious message, are kind of funny, like the carrot pill. But it's important to remember, as we intake our black pills, to be careful about that. You know, it's, it's hard not to, because sex and sandal sells. And we have to be aware of what's going on in the world. But we need to remember that they make their money off the sensational, the thing that catches our eye. And part of their agenda is to deliver those messages because it's disheartening. It's depressing. It captures us emotionally and, and puts us in a heightened state of emotions, whether stress fear, anxiousness, or whatever, which makes us more manipulative and more easy to be manip manipulated. And so we have to guard ourselves because th that's part of their agenda. They're doing it on purpose. So as we consume our news, we need to keep that in mind. And it's hard to, it's hard to get around to some degree because even with, you know, a news or geopolitical or or um, political commentary outlet or podcast or whatever that is delivered from a good perspective from people who are balanced it the very nature of it is this way no matter how good the people are it, it can't be helped and so it's important we keep this in perspective and balance because while especially as men, it is our job to pay attention to the world, to what's going on, to recognize possible issues, you know, like one that I like to follow called future conflict. You know, they're trying to analyze geopolitics and watch out for potential danger and future conflict. So it can't be helped but to be that way to some degree. But if you think about it, how many updates about China do we actually need? You know, there's a limit to how much that matters. It's important to pay attention to what they're doing, but we don't really need that for our day-to-day -day lives. It, there's things that affect us, and we need to pay attention. You know, if we have a conflict with China over Taiwan, for example, that is going to affect us, but there's not a whole lot we can actually do about it. So there's a limit to how often we need to hear about that. And that's true for most political issues, especially at the international national level. You know, we don't really need to worry about every single lefty thing New York or California does, unless it's your state. Okay, if it's your state, then yeah, you do need to pay attention, and, and I'm sorry for you. But really, it's just political, it's just local and state that we need to pay attention to more because that's where we can actually do something about it. And that's where it's going to have our direct imp impact on us. And likewise, with different events, we don't really need to have a, a moment by moment, minute by minute update of every single riot or shooting. We need to pay attention. And I under completely understand if it's in your state or your city, yeah, definitely pay attention more so than you might need those updates. But unless it's some profound event like 9 11, which in that case, yeah. It was completely understandable that people were glued to the TV for days. That was profound and major. 
But those are far, far and few in between such events. Most things are heightened and overdone. You know, the obsession over shootings. I mean, people are shot and killed in Chicago every day. So why are we obsessing about certain shootings over others? It's because of political agendas. And we need to stop falling for that and start balancing our intake of media and news and be realistic. We need to take some white pills, really, is what it comes down to. And and I don't just mean fluffy stuff. I mean, there is some place for that. But things that are uplifting, that are edifying, that are good for us, art, poetry, classic literature, things that are helping us be productive to know what we can actually do about something in our lives. Things that help us be better men, husbands, fathers, brothers, friends, and members of our community, etc. Because that's where we can actually do something. Or if all we hear about is these things that we can't actually do anything about, we just get bogged down with stress anxiousness, frustration, etc. And then that's going to encourage us to indulge in, in forms of escapism, just like I, fo I focus a lot with addiction. Well, I'm not saying that, you know, it's going to necessarily drive you into addiction. It's certainly going to in increase bad habits and indulgence and things that are not edifying or can be taken too far. So I'm certainly not advocating for a Pollyanna view, I'm, I'm talking about balance. And there's a couple passages in the Bible that I think really make this distinction clear. In Ephesians 5, it talks about... I have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedience do in secret. So right there we hear we do have a responsibility as men to pay attention to what's going on. To be aware of the evil and the darkness. To act, that is, and this, as it says, expose, act. But remember, it is shameful what they do. It is it is bad. And it goes on. Everything will be exposed and become visible by the light. But we need to think about the consumption of this media and darkness by these people who love to push the black pill. You know, we talk all oh, doomsayers and doomers and black pill merchants black pill grifters, etc. And many of them are on purpose. We have to remember that. There is a reason for that. There is an agenda. There is a purpose to what they're doing. And we need to balance that with Philippians 4. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. The good, the true, and the beautiful. This is where our primary focus needs to be. And this is why there is such op opposition to these th three points of virtue. And that's why they always push the perverse, the violent, the gory, the unnatural, the sexual, the deviance, the subversion, because it catches the eye and captures the mind. And they're doing it on purpose. I mean, this is very much what it talks about in 2 Corinthians 10. The weapons we fight with are not of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Remember, they have the opposite. They have the same weapons 
but inverse. They have the same strategies, but inverse. The same strongholds to stand against ours. And they are purposely pushing the black pills, the negative, the perverse, the eye candy, to catch us, to bog us down and make us depressed, apathetic, frustrated, etc., which, as I said, can push us into bad habits and even so far as addiction and self-destruction. And you think about some of these guys who are out there trying to do the good fight, who are single and older and have had setbacks in their lives. You can see how much they struggle to keep a positive attitude. You have to think about when you are consuming news of the darkness, you are consuming darkness. And just as it says, you are what you eat, if you are consuming darkness in the spiritual, mental, and emotional ways, it's going to affect you. And to some degree, that can't be helped because we do have to resist, we do have to fight, we do have to push back against this. But like those single guys who don't have wife and children, it's sometimes easy to lose focus of what really matters. Wife, children, community are part of a man's basic purpose and meaning. But like I always talk about how important it is to have more, that most of us are called to a higher purpose and meaning as well. And part of that is to help us maintain that balance because oftentimes, of course, our stress and frustration do come from these daily domestic responsibilities and obligations we have on top of what's going on in the world. And so having hobbies, ministries, and other things that are separate from the political or from the domestic responsibilities helps us stay grounded and helps us balance. You know, reading some poetry in the evening, going fishing, touch, you know, part of that, the meme of touching grass. And that's why it's so important to have real person relationships. You know, online is great and it gives us a lot of opportunity for exchange of information and networking, but it is very difficult to do serious positive things online. Most of that impactful stuff, the stuff that's going to bring you serious meaning in your life and give you the ability to endure is stuff that happens in real life. And it, it's important to think about too that as it talks about in Philippians 4, and the God of peace will be with you, if we're doing the rest of those things, if we're focusing on the good, the beautiful, the true, we will lose the touch with that peace if all we're thinking about is the darkness. If we're only focused on the evil and the bad things going on in the world. We have to be aware of them. We need to be good watchmen on the wall for our marriage, family, and community and people. But it can't be everything. We need to... You know, just like some of these sayings are, and that's why they exist. Take time to smell the roses. To spend time with the wife, like my three-in-one rule. To be with your children. To be with brothers. To spend time in community. To partake of things that are beautiful. Whether it's art. Whether it's something you enjoy as a hobby. Or to see the impact of mentorship. And a young man. These are the things that will help us endure the darkness that we must face as men. We have no choice. We're going to have to face them. But to maintain the stronghold of our minds and our hearts and our souls against the darkness, the good, the beautiful, and the true, God, family, our spouses, our people and community have to be first and outweigh in the balance the darkness and that stress and struggle. So it's really important we think about this constantly and step back and maintain balance. I know it's not easy. Believe me, this is something I struggle with constantly because I enjoy the fight and I am a political nerd. I enjoy that. But you have to maintain balance or it will drag you down. I hope this 
makes that distinction and balance make sense in your mind. Carry on.